Welcome, Soul Tribe, to Deep Soul Awakenings with your hosts, Chastity Ryan and Millie Franco. Get ready to shed some light on the unspoken aspects of spiritual and healing journeys. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to this week's episode of Deep Deep Soul Awakenings. I'm your host, Millie Franco. Um, So, admittedly, I'm a few days late with this next episode, but I feel like there's so much going on in the world right now that sometimes it's kind of hard not to get caught up in the outside things or even just sometimes to get caught up in the day-to-day you know I have two boys and I usually record on Tuesdays and Tuesdays Tuesday was Halloween and I just really wanted to be present with them you know I had them both and we got to go out and laugh and they probably ate too much candy and then we came home and ate with some more junk because you know that's what that's what you do for Halloween. <laughs> um also I'm not sure if you guys can hear anything in my background. So like if you hear some flutes playing in the background, it's because my sons like to sleep um with the sounds of Native American f- flutes. It's like a... Native American flutes played in like canyon areas. Um, it's actually quite soothing and nice. And I'm actually pretty close to Eli right now. So if you hear snoring in the background, that's my tiny human. If you don't, cool. That's even better. <laughs> um, I guess what I wanted to come on and talk about today is, you know, I guess ownership like ownership of your power ownership of your life ownership of your actions just ownership of everything that is you and it's like i have so many conversations i i consistently have soul chats with people like consistently throughout my day almost every day unless i'm in like hermit mode in which case i kind of isolate and seclude myself in order to recharge and I've noticed that there is like this reoccurring reoccurring theme of limitation you know we we as a people at times accept limitations of things or accept accept things like you know inherited trauma or mental illness or ways of being ways of reacting we just accept it as something that is you know um, I know for me in the past it's always been a thing, well, you know, the, the women in my family are, are strong-willed and they, they have strong personalities and all of these things. And essentially it was like, okay, well, that's just who we are. We have strong personalities. We don't need men. We can do everything ourselves. We We are self-sufficient. We don't ask for help. And then within my healing journey... I realized that, you know, all of these things were things that I told, that I was told that I am. And of course, you know, I'm a strong person. But sometimes I do need help. I am self-sufficient. But I don't have to give 110% of myself every time until the point where there is no more of me to give. You know, I've always been taught that when you are a woman, you are a mother, you you give continuously. But then it was never where I was taught that there was any, like, end point to that, you know, so 
I accepted that limitation of happiness, you know, well, in order to be there for people, I got to show up for them at the expense of myself. And, you know, where, where does the joy come in that? Where does the, where does the happiness come in, in that? And then it was kind of like, you know, I, anger was a real thing for me for a very long time and something that's pretty consistent. I feel like within my lineage, or at least with, you know, with my mom and my grandma was like these outbursts of anger where they would get really angry and say a lot of messed up, just really, really messed up stuff that they didn't mean. And then, you know, the pattern was okay. Projectile vomit words. Ignore it. Act like it never happened. And then go back to life being the way that it was before that, you know. And I, 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 I for a long time, I, I, you know, I, I claimed that narrative where I, I would be guilty of doing the same things where, you know, people would upset me and I would tell them off and it never felt good, you know, but I, I had just accepted that that's how things were. And now in my healing journey, I, I realized that as I get to know myself, and I really have a deep understanding of, of self and what it is that I stand for and the morals that I hold, it doesn't really matter what anybody says about me anymore, what anybody thinks of me or whatever narratives they try to project because I know who I am I know what I stand for I know what I do and I don't do and I realize now that those people don't need access to my energy they don't no one should have access to your energy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No one should have access to you unless you feel that it's in alignment for them to have access to you. And it's like, it really just makes me think about all of these things that we accept as people because we're told that that's the way that it is. And I mean, it really makes me think of the state of the world. Look at all of the things that are going on right now. And for a lot of people, they just have, you know, that, well, that's just the way that it is. War is a part of history. It's a pattern, you know, they're bound to happen. You know, when we look at history, the history of us, the history of people, there's always been genocide. There's always been war. There's always been killing. There's always been something going on in the background that divides us as a people. You know, when it, when it comes down to it, even when you look at religion, you know, I got into a conversation the other day with someone about everything that's going on. And, you know, she was just like, well, my brothers and sisters are innocent and essentially like they are validated in everything that they do and it was just like your brothers and sisters and you know brothers and sisters by religion but to me in what I hold sacred you know in the, in the truth that I find in my heart is that we are all brothers and sisters we are all fractals of source we are all connected therefore we are all sacred in the same ways that you know everything is an energy everything is a being the water the air the sun the moon everything is sacred because it is life it is energy and i don't i guess in my heart sometimes i don't understand how we got to a place where We've forgotten that. And I had uh, an Akashic Records reading the other day. Uh, Akasha Hawaii. For um, those of you who are interested in 
she's really dope you know she goes into your origin and like where your soul incarnated and all of that great stuff and we all come from the void guys <laughs> but in our conversations we spoke of something that we call the kill switch and essentially a kill switch is like something that brings you back to connection, something that, that brings you back to self, brings you back to love, brings you back to your heart space, consciousness, connection. And I feel like in every aspect of that, there's like feeling, but it's also love. And I and I know it sounds very hippie of me, you know, or people's projection of what a hippie is to be like yeah you know love is the answer but at the end of the day love really is the answer because I feel like when we live authentically and we are you know we have a deep understanding of self and we move authentically as ourselves as the person we are as the being we are as the soul that we are We move authentically in love. And I feel like when it comes down to it, when we separate the trauma, when we separate the conditioning, when we separate all of the extra shit that we, we are told essentially that is important. What is left with us is love. And it's not to say that your other emotions aren't valid. They are valid. They, they they teach us something. They show us something. You know, in a conversation that I had today, with somebody who was just very angry, you know, very triggered by people. The underlying cause of that triggering and the underlying cause of that anger is essentially trauma and grief held inside, that energy held inside within you. When you hold grief inside, it manifests as anger. You know, that's like, I, I live in New York City, and in New York City, I think is, I've spoken about it before, monochronic time, one thing after another, you can waste time. And it's like, even myself, sometimes I find myself guilty, and I'm just like, well, I don't have time for that. And to me, when I really sit and I really think about it, we only have time. You know, people will tell you, oh, well, time is limited. And, you know, if you're lucky, you get to live till 80 years old. Yeah, absolutely. If you're lucky, you get to live till 80. That's great. 80 years of life, that's a fucking blessing. But to me, when, when we really think about it, you know, it's like money. Money isn't good or bad. You know, money, money is an energy. But money is an energy that in the world that we live in is very prominent. And people do a lot of different things in order to obtain it. And, you know, one would think that it is like the major currency that we trade in but when I when I think of it when I really sit in my heart and I think to me underneath it all the currency that we use the exchange that we use is essentially time so you know when we work the amount of time that we use to be working, to be in a specific place, to be doing a specific job, we trade that time for money. And a lot of times we don't get to decide how much money our time is worth. But essentially what we're trading is time for the currency of money. And without the time, you can't necessarily trade for the money 
when we, you know, when we grow farmers, they grow fruit, they grow vegetables, they do all of these beautiful things to sustain us and, and, and feed us. And yes, they are trading tangible goods. But in order to obtain those goods, in order to, to grow those goods, essentially what they exchanged was their time. You have a reciprocal exchange with somebody. Let's say you go to a healer and you, and you pay them for their help to help heal you. Essentially, you're paying them for their time, whatever set price they've put for their time. But at the same time, you're also giving them your time because you're giving them your attention. You're sharing that moment with them. But to me, it's kind of like, you know, the most valuable thing that we have is time. But instead, we tell ourselves that we can waste it. Now, you know, I've said it before that I, I highly resonate with monochronic, with monochronic time. No, sorry. I don't resonate with monochronic time. I resonate with polychronic time because essentially there's so many things happening at once. And for all of us, you know, there's always so many things happening at once. But we don't live in presence, so we don't realize. You know, and you can, like, I'm here right now, and I'm home, and I'm recording this podcast, but, you know, I'm also sitting on my altar and connecting with my spirits. But I'm also here with an eyesight of my sons watching them sleep and just enjoying seeing them sleep peacefully, but also enjoying being in their presence and being filled with love, just looking at them with the love that I feel in my heart. And that's all occurring at once. You know, and I don't get paid for the podcast. I do this because I I feel like there's just so many things that would resonate, things that I, truths that I hold in my heart that would resonate with so many of you that you need to hear, so I share my voice with you. But some people would argue because I'm not paid for this, that it's a waste of my time, but how could it be? I don't feel that anything could ever be a waste of your time. Because there's always a way to find value in everything that you do. I say this to say that, you know, sometimes in conversations with people, they tell me that they don't have the time to to heal. They don't have the time that it takes to be on a healing journey. And my question to all of them and my question to all of you that feel that way is, you know, well, what is your alternative? Until you get to a place where you take ownership of yourself, of your life. What is the alternative? You know, I remember myself before being on this journey. I remember myself disconnected. And, you know, at times, sometimes still now I get disconnected. And there's like this sense of helplessness, this sense of unhappiness. And you know, it hurts my heart to think that there's so many people out there that just accept that as life, accept that as their truth. It's like, well, you know, things happen to me. It doesn't get better. Life just keeps throwing things at me. And it like, it makes me emotional because there's just so much life to live. There's so much beauty in this world. And I know right now, we are so very caught up in the ugly. But there is still so much beauty. And I feel like you're able to see that beauty when you have connection, when you have that connection to spirit. When you have that connection to nature. When you're able to be in presence and actually take in 
all of your surroundings and shift your perspective to just be able to be in the moment. You know, um, there was one time that I was talking to a shaman that I sit in ceremony with. Eddie Medicine Whispers, and he looked at me and he asked me, you know, so, you know, ceremony was beautiful, but what I, I want to ask you, what's been in your way this whole time? And I looked at him and I was like, me? The only person who can stop you from healing is you. The only person who can stop your life from changing is you. The only person who can change your life and reclaim their power is you. But you have to take accountability. I know for me, it was literally one day where I was just tired of my own shit. I was sick of myself. I was sick of the excuses, sick of the victim mindset, sick of it all. <coughs> To be honest, really, really sick of it all. And I decided, you know, in that moment, this just wasn't the life that I wanted to live anymore. I didn't want to be unhappy. I didn't want to feel like a victim. I didn't want to be depressed every day. I didn't want to cry every day. I didn't want to feel sad every day. And day by day, I just kept holding, holding myself accountable. Reading and um, taking in all of the knowledge that I could. I don't know if you guys can hear the coughing, but my um, little human is not feeling too great. Um, but, you know, I just kept reading and learning and allowing my mind to just expand in the ways that I questioned things and the ways that I understood things. And it, and it got to a place one day where I could see the value in everything that I had been through. And I could, you know, situations that we go through, trauma that we go through, of course, it sucks. But there's a lot of things that I can look back on now and I can look back and smile because they helped me become this person that I am. Because if it wasn't for the failed relationship, if it wasn't for the postpartum, if it wasn't for really just being sick and tired of being sick and tired, I would have never taken ownership of my life. I would have never came onto this path. And I would have never found all of the beautiful people that I have in my life. Because it is possible to find people who really just don't want anything from you but to love you and be your friend, your family. Um, I was asked by someone the other day, you know, we were having a conversation and she was just like, you know, I, I feel like I'm being called to a spiritual path. Like I, I'm, I'm being called to tap into spirit more, but I don't know how to start. And that got me thinking. I remember feeling the same way. But I, I remember feeling the same way, but being so hesitant to go into any traditions or to follow any traditions that had any basis of fear. And, um, you know, I was raised Catholic and, you know, essentially there was always like, well, God's going to punish you and you're going to go to hell with this and you need to do this. And, you know, that, that fear and obey, you know, place that fear so that they obey you so that they do what you want, act as you want, you know, do as I say, not as I do kind of energy. And then I followed other traditions where I learned. And, and, you know, I find that with every tradition, I find myself learning about, I, tra I take from it what I hold is true, what feels right to me. 
Because, you know, it goes back to that kill switch, that, that love, that feeling that you have. Because your feelings can tell you where there is truth. So I take the truth that I find in it and I leave the rest. You know, people always say, take what resonates and leave the rest. That's what I do. But in all of this, I find that there is no right or wrong way to connect. Your path is unique to you. You do what feels right to you. And of course, you know, you can find a basis so that you have an idea. You know, I know for me, like the creation of an altar, on your altar space, you should always have candles and send some water. And incense for purification. The candles for the fire, for the portal, for the energy, for transmutation. The water as an offering, you know, libations, but also the water carries the memory. The water knows all. So essentially, if you are looking to connect, the water is also key. These are all energy. These are all beings. These are all, you know, beings that should be honored as well and treated as sacred. And for me, once you have that and then you're able to sit and just sit with them, sit with it, and speak from your heart. Because when you speak truly from your heart, you will always be able to connect. And it's like, you know, I, I think so much. And I feel so much of just everything that goes on. And at times I feel like for those people who are like me who are sensitive, sensitive to energy. A lot of times we, we, we feel the grief of the world because we are helping to transmute that energy and it can be so happy sometimes and it can be so disheartening at times and it can really make you wonder and question yourself and, and your path and your purpose and all of our purpose here as humans, you know, as beings, as spirit, as energy, what is our purpose here? And it can seem that we do a lot more, like we do a lot more harm than we do good. But to me, that's why connection is so important because for a lot of us, we've become so disconnected. You know, I said in the last episode, we're so connected to social media, like you, you, you can't even turn on the news or or go on social media or anything and know what is truth anymore. Things can be distorted. Faces can be changed. Backgrounds can be switched. Information can be misleading. So how do you know what is truth? How do you know when there is distortion? And to me, I say that, you know, my truth is that there is truth and feeling. There are some things that cannot be seen and only felt. And I feel like the truth to me right now is that absolutely we are experiencing a genocide. We are experiencing a genocide of people, of a whole group of people. That should be protected because all people should be protected. And it is our birthright as people to just be able to live and be alive. Our children should be able to grow up. Our children should be able to be sleep safe without fear of dying. All children. We all have that right. And there is no being or energy or spirit or person that has more value than another. We are all valuable. 
And it just really makes me think of everything, you know, and how it is that we got disconnected and how it is that, you know, all of this is even a thing, you know, and the powers that be, why do we allow them to do all of these things? And then it always brings me back to that fear and control, that us and them, that victim mindset. You know, how can you gain power? Divide the people. How do you divide people? Religion. Victimization. You know, I'm better than you are. Separation, fear, act a certain way, do these specific things, or this consequence is going to come. You're going to go to hell. And I mean, right now, for a lot of people, hell is right here. You create heaven and hell where you are because you are that powerful. So why not reclaim your power and create heaven instead? And when I think of all of the land that has been taken from so many different people, you now it's crazy. Uh, I've been reading a lot and, and learning a lot. And in the beginning, a lot of it had to do with sugar. Sugar cane. Tobacco. All of these things, like these things that were valuable, that land was taken for. And then it was like, oh, well, now we're on this new land to get these things that are valuable or to make the land produce these things that are valuable. But there are these people on the land and they are beneath us. So we're going to sterilize them or we're going to kill them or whatever it is that they decided to do at that time. Lots of sterilization throughout history. Lots of killing of people throughout history. Lots of separation of people. Division of people. You know, and I know I've spoken before of like even giving the land back to the people of Hawaii, but in researching that more and in learning about that more, I've learned that the people of Hawaii are actually are actually the minority when it comes to the land. So even if you gave the land back to the people of Hawaii that are there now, it's not enough people. I feel like with in, in Puerto Rico, well, there's still a lot of Puerto Ricans there because we are a prideful people. <laughs> but there's a lot of us who have left. And, you know, I'm I'm essentially first generation born in New York. The rest of my family was born in Puerto Rico. And then in all of us moving from our native lands, in a sense, you know, we are also being disconnected from the land, being disconnected from culture, being disconnected from our ancestors, being disconnected from sacred spaces. And then we are, are put in these places where, you know, you, you chase a specific dream that was given to you that never really felt like your own, but you follow because you're taught to follow, you're taught to listen, you're taught that this is what you want. So you go with it. You accept limitations. You, you, you do what you can do, essentially. And then you find ways of distracting yourself. You find ways of numbing yourself. You know, I also had a conversation with someone, uh, another soul chat the other day where we were talking about addiction, um, addiction to drugs. And, you know, I, in this conversation, I was like, I, I honestly believe that people become addicted to drugs because especially like drugs like, um, 
heroin and ecstasy and things like that because to me it's like these drugs separate your consciousness from your body and it essentially brings you back to source in a way where you feel love because you are no longer holding on to all of the conditioning, all of the trauma, all of the hurt, all of these things that we allow essentially to bring us down, to hold us down, to weigh us down within these bodies, within these, within this physical existence. And we free our consciousness from the body. So it feels like being, she, the person I was talking to literally told me it feels like being wrapped up in the arms of love. And it's like, I can understand that. And I can understand why somebody would chase that. Because the reality that they live in never really gave them that love. So why wouldn't you chase that love? Are they really chasing the high or are they chasing the love that they feel within that high? And I, I'm not condoning drug use or saying that anyone should use drugs to feel love. No. What I'm saying is that I can understand. But I can tell you that on my spiritual journey and within my path and within the understanding of self that I have been given, because now I understand who I am and what I stand for, how it is that I move, my connection to spirit and, and how it is that I want to embody spirit on this earth. And in that, in being my authentic self, it feels like I am being wrapped up in love. And, and by being someone who is just allowing themselves to be tapped into everything that they are. For me, you know, mediumship is something that has been making itself present, making itself known lately. I am able to speak to people with resonance. I am able to connect with people. I am able to connect with their ancestors in a sense and be that arm that wraps them in love. I feel like all of us just need a little bit of love sometimes. We all just need a little bit of kindness, a little bit of compassion. You know, and I, there's someone that I love that had told me, no one had ever told her she was strong before. And it just killed me because she is one of the strongest people I know. So to all of you out there who are listening, I say that you are strong. I say that you are loved. I say that you are beautiful. I say that you are kind. And I say that you are doing the best that you can with what you know. Keep learning, keep seeking, keep reading, keep asking questions. Keep turning to the people around you who speak to you with resonance. You know, I know for me, in, in the embodiment of the elder that I am becoming and, and essentially the elder that I am to those who are younger than me, I sometimes am the embodiment of the mother that they never had, that mother's love, that nurturing that they never had. And I am honored to be that. I am honored to be the person that I needed. For those of you who are seeking to understand why it is that you feel that you don't fit in here or, or that feel like they like home is somewhere else or home is somewhere that they're looking for that they can't find. I definitely implore you to read um, a book by Dolores Cannon. It's called The Waves of Volunteers. And I definitely feel like it will help you to understand. There is so much knowledge and so much information out there. And I believe that I am here to help guide 
all of you that listen to me, that tune into me, that connect with me, that resonate with you, all of you, my brothers and sisters, because you are all my brothers and sisters. I feel that I am here to help lead you back to connection. To help you find that ember, that spark within your ashes, so that you can reignite your flame and feed the fires of your heart with passion, with truth, with resonance, with a shift of perspective and love. And I will continue to do this because it is part of the mission that I hold on my heart. And with that, I say, you know, may our ancestors continue to bless us as they watch over us from the stars. May the water continue to hold the memory of all the things that we seek to understand and know. May the fire continue to transmute energy and open portals. May the air continue to whisper the answers to the questions that we ask. May the sun continue to shine and heal us. May the moon continue to bring us into reflection. And may spirit continue to guide us and connect us with love. May we continue to be the embodiment of our ancestors' wildest dreams and be honored and bring them honor in the choices that we make. I love you all. Till next time, be kind to yourself. Thanks for listening to this episode and continuing on this journey with us. Be sure to join our growing communities on Facebook and Instagram. We can't wait to have you back with us next week. Thank you for allowing us to be your voice. Until next time, remember to take care and be kind to yourself.